So I'm going to stick with the word of God. And I mentioned one prophetic word that Chuck Pierce gave in October. He gives them on a regular basis, so it's hard to actually keep track of them all, but you should try. And this is one he gave uh, just last Sunday uh, at their church on uh, June 21st on Fa Father's Day, just part of one of the words. I want to read it to you. It says, I say to you, shadows are being cast. Shadows are overcasting. Right now, I felt that. He was putting language to what I was feeling on the inside, like there's really a dark element that's trying to come over the country. And there's divisiveness, like I haven't witnessed since we were younger uh, during the riots, OK? In, in our uh, part of the world, in New Jersey, there were riots in Newark, New Jersey in 1967. There was tanks rolling down one of the major thoroughfares. And people died because of that. I mean, our own soldiers were shooting our own citizens. It was horrendous. I don't want it to get there, but it sure feels like it's heading there if we're not careful. And that's why we keep praying. God, heal our land. We're your people. We need to humble ourselves and pray. Purpose to seek his face. Turn from our wicked ways. Ha! Huh. Pray to God that he would hear us and heal this land. Amen? So that's what Chuck said. Shadows are being cast. They're overcasting. I say to you, watch for my shadow. That really hit me. Okay, watch for my shadow. Because in the midst of all that other stuff, the Lord is still moving. But if it's darkness, you've got to stay near him enough. That's right out of Psalm 91, right? We're under the shadow of his wings because we're close. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We live there. We're close to him because he's our father. And he loves us. And we're in his family. We're not orphans that are begging for things from him. We're his sons and daughters. And we call him Abba Father. So watch for my shadow, Chuck said. For then in the midst of the shadows, the enemy is working. We all can feel that one. And then he said this month, and he was talking about the month we're in now, even though it's June 21st, the next 30 days. That, you know, the timing of the Hebrew calendar is a little different than the timing of our calendar. So he's saying this month is a month, a time for you to radiate. All right. I'm just going to slow down a little because... What does that even mean, a time for us to radiate? I might want to do that, but are my actions indicating that I'm radiating the light of God? Or am I lowering myself down to, to the very thing I don't like? You know, and I'm not saying don't be confrontational, but you can speak the truth and do it in love if the Lord is anointing you. You can also speak the truth with hatred in your voice, even as a Christian. Because once your emotions get hijacked in an argument, you're not in control anymore. I was reading Proverbs 31, and at the beginning, we all know Proverbs 31 for what uh, is said about the virtuous woman. But in the earlier verses, it says, this is what my mother told me. And it's King Lemuel in there, but people believe that was Solomon. And this is what my mother told me. She said, the reason you shouldn't be drunk with wine is because you're a king. And when kings get drunk with wine, they abuse their power. How many of you know that you're kings and priests as well? That's right. Raise your hand because that's a big role. That means that, that we're representing the king as his ambassadors, as kings and priests in this world. So why, why do I say being drunk is bad? Because you're out of control. Being drunk means that you're not in control of your emotions anymore. But being raged is also being out of control. And it's not good for a leader to be out of control because then, today especially, things that you put online or things that get photographed, they're going to stay up there for a really long time. And now it seems like they're going back into the archives 50 years ago to see if somebody dressed a certain way at a Halloween party or said something at a different time in the world. doesn't make it right, but things were accepted then that aren't accepted now. But you can't blame them today, 50 years later, for something that wasn't out of line then. But it's happening. So here I go. I didn't want to go there. But this is really important stuff. It's a time for me, Peter Rizal. I can control me, and then I can try to help you. And if we're going to try to radiate, we've got to stick to the word of God and stick to the Holy Spirit for you to go forward. Time for you to radiate, and a time for you to go forward. And your radiation will change the course of my silhouette in the earth. Whoa. Isn't that a great picture? That as we're following along with the Lord and we radiate, he's able to move and his shadow will move because we're adding more light into the culture. Man, there's a whole message right there. So I say the enemy is attempting to cast shadows. And I say many will fall under his spell of darkness this month. But 
I say to you, I'm calling the people to remove the veil of that shadow and step into the light. Wow, I just want to say it together, okay? You guys are going to say it with me? You can see it up there, right? I am calling a people to the last two lines. Let's start again. I am calling a people to remove the veil of that shadow and step into the light. I believe that's a word from the Lord. We're supposed to be different, okay? We're Christians. We're his ambassadors. Not saying don't have strong opinions about things. You should have strong opinions. You should have high levels of conviction about what you believe, but you're expected to do it through the lens of Christ, WWJD, right? What would he do? Trisha said it earlier. You that's without sin, cast the first st stone. How much time have you tried to hear the other person that you're talking to? How well could you articulate the opponent's position without feeling disgusted by their position? But it's really hard. Jesus was so effective because he knew the law better than the Pharisees. <laughs> that had to take some work, don't you think? And then he could get inside their world. Paul said, I become all things to all people in order that I may win some. We should try. That's all I'm saying. We should try. We should put the effort out into understanding before we try to communicate complicated things. All right, so here we go. This is what I wrote about today as I was thinking about what we were going to say today. This is the post I put up on Facebook, roughly. It says Ephesians 5, 25 and 26, that Jesus is cleansing us through the showering of the pure water of the Word of God. And this is what I was feeling. These have been times, I'm sorry, there have been times during this difficult season of COVID, not just COVID, but the economic hardships that that's brought on, the election year mudslinging that's already going on, the economic and then the political and then the social unrest that we've been witnessing. When we feel like we need to take a long shower in the pure water of God's word. I don't know about you, but that's how I felt. I just felt like I needed something to wash my brain and wash my feelings and wash my emotions. It's not the only time I've ever felt this, but we have an answer for that. When, when that's happening to you, you can remove yourself from that defilement by getting into God's presence. It's holy and it's pure. And we're not supposed to hide from the world. We're in it. We're just not of it. So be aware of your feelings. When we feel like we need to take a long shower to purge us from the defilement that we're feeling, Determine, this is my advice, okay? Determine to keep your heart pure and protected from the escalating language of hostility and defilement that has become so prevalent in our culture, okay? God's arsenal, only a few of the weapons, there's many, but part of what he ha has given us is his Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me. Does he live on the inside of you? Yeah, yeah. Does he want to give you everything you need? Yeah. Are you availing yourself of the full range of everything he's given you? I hope we're saying yes. That's a powerful weapon. The word of God is a powerful weapon. It's the truth that helps counter the lies. Ha! Huh. And then the blood of Jesus never loses its power. So if you're worried about COVID and your health, fine. But what about the blood? Cover yourself under the blood on a daily basis. Put on the armor of God in Ephesians, right? That, we, that so many of us know it by heart. So... What are you doing? Avail yourself of those tools, and you're going to have to discipline yourself. I've been doing this. I've really been writing down the core scriptures uh, uh, that God has used in my life, and I just say them out loud in the morning to just refresh my mind. I, I call it hygiene for my mind gene. <laughs> it's like, if I'm not careful, man, somebody's trying to get in my DNA with the wrong kind of stuff, and I need to hygiene my mind because... God's word is what's going to get me the answer. Oh, that's the answer. That's what it says. It's the protection and the answers we need. We can and must be cleansed under that flow of pure living water that he offers, okay? That's what he told to the woman um, at the well that he met, the Samaritan woman. He said, I could give you living water if you want it. And when you drink the water I give you, you'll never be thirsty again. 